Welcome to a special edition of That's Good Broncos Game Day Edition with guest host Steve Green. Hi. Steve's a Colts fan. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Colts fan. Which means this clip has been giving Steve nightmares all week. He's got the Chargers back in circulation. My little brother worked at Blockbuster Video, and Philip Rivers would come in there after Sunday night games, and I would, I would be like, hey, hey, Nate, I will give you $100 if you say to Philip Rivers, hey, can I help you find anything? Like, I don't know, maybe your receivers? But he never fucking took it. He has, like, interacted with my family before, and I don't like that. So the San Diego Chargers beat the Indianapolis Colts, which nobody thought was going to happen, last week on Monday Night Football. I was actually there, and I had to leave the stadium after as 56,000 fans told me how much my team sucks. We had to see Philip Rivers do this. <clears throat> Mama. Whoa! I think he said Mama Woo, or perhaps Baby Woo, or perhaps Day Woo, which is that old car, de car dealership. <clears throat> Mama. Whoa! Philip, I admire that he's so excited about the win because God knows they're hard to come by for the Chargers these days. This isn't because I don't like Philip Rivers because I don't, but he honestly looks like he has fetal alcohol syndrome. The whole fucking time. Even if they're winning, he's like, and he'll like, he'll connect on Facebook and he'll be like, I hate the Chargers probably more than any other NFL team because I lived in San Diego for a while and I remember Chargers fans being fucking cunts. If you are a Chargers fan and you and you allow your kid to grow up a Chargers fan, it's child abuse. I really do believe that. And if you're a Browns fan, it's the same fucking thing. It is October, which means Halloween is right around the corner. But Andrew Luck seems to be experiencing early problems from Halloween. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, drops always haunt you, bad throws always haunt you. You know, I got bailed out a couple times, but, you know, one kind of great catch by Reggie comes to mind. Uh, you know, false starts haunt you, penalties haunt you, there's so many things that haunt you. <laughs> you forgot the most important thing that can haunt you. <laughs> Ghosts. I don't know if you believe in them, but they are real. They are real. So we've all heard it a hundred times. Jim Ursay told the USA Today, which apparently covers sports, that the Colts have changed their model because they didn't get enough of these points to his Super Bowl ring with Peyton Manning. He went on to say Brady never had consistent numbers and he has three of these points to his ring again. Pittsburgh had two, the Giants had two, Baltimore had two, and we had one. That leaves you frustrated. You make the playoffs 11 times, and you're out in the first round seven of the 11 times? You love to have Star Wars numbers from Peyton, Marvin, and Reggie, but mostly you love this points to his ring again. But we had a lot of Star Wars numbers. What the fuck does that mean? Like the amount of people killed in the Death Star strike? Luke Skywalker, when you think about it, murdered a lot of fucking people that day. Now I love when people just point to what they're talking about instead of actually saying it. I'd like to have more, but my always seems to have a... Also my doesn't get, unless I'm but then when I'm, I'm, and then I wake up the next day and I feel sad. <laughs> I, I went to the Colts forums and they were all like, how can you say that Jim Irsay was blaming Peyton Manning when he's like throwing a fucking parade for the guy? If you actually read it and you watch like the interview that he gave, like he's being a little cunty. He's kind of like, you know, Brady got three of these and you know, I, for all the time we had with Peyton, you know, 13 seasons, you know, we only got one of these things. Go tell that to Dan Marino, man. Dan Marino will strangle you in a bar. And by the way, Tom Brady's had pretty consistent numbers throughout his entire career. And when he got hurt, Matt Castle came in and the Patriots still went to the playoffs. When Peyton Manning got hurt, the Colts went from first to worst. Two and 14, that's why they have Andrew Luck right now. Jim Irsay also said you make the playoffs 11 times and you're one and done seven out of the 11 times. Well, guess what? You were just one and done with Andrew Luck last season, man. It's really fucking hard to win in the playoffs. Have some fucking respect for the Sheriff. Peyton Manning. I have always kind of been iffy on, on Jim Irsay. On the one hand, I'm so glad that he's kept this in Indy. But on the other hand, I'm so glad that he drafted Peyton Manning so they could keep him in Indy. You owe everything to that guy. Our defense during the Manning era, basically it was all him. Our defense was Peyton throwing another touchdown. 
oh, hey, Peyton, um, so they just scored. We need you to go out there and score again. That was our defense. I'm like a 13-year-old girl about this whole thing, but, but, but whatever. At least I don't look like a 13-year-old girl, Irsay. Here's some pictures from Jim Irsay's Twitter account. This one says, it's time to let the monster out of its cage to feed. It's bad enough that you tweet a picture of yourself looking the way you do, but it's a whole nother thing to caption it, like, I'm about to suck the biggest dick. It's time to let the monster out of the cage to feed. He's like, let me in there, coach. I will get that dick off. And then there's this one. Why does he have two rings on? If I was married, I'd wear two wedding rings. Am I married twice? Do I have two wives? Do I double love my one wife? I'll give him this. He's super ripped for a 54 year old man. Although he's wrinkling more than he should be at this point. Jim, you're an old man and you're never gonna get your youth back. You look like a, like a fuck me boy in a gay porn, okay? With his true religion jeans and like an affliction shirt on. But the best response to the whole Jim Irsay debacle comes from former Colts GM, Bill Pullian. He was on ESPN being interviewed by Sage Steele when he said this. Have you spoken to Mr. Ursay? I have not. Do you plan to? No. Okay, moving on. Will, will you be contacting him? Nope. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty smooth, honestly. Nah, we're not friends. Hey Jim, go ahead and take a long look at Bill Polian because he's the perfect example of how you should both act and dress. But you're gonna have to observe him from a distance because he's never gonna call you, he's never gonna text you or Snapchat you or hit you up on Tinder. And I know that you use Snapchat and Tinder. You're just a dirty, filthy old man, aren't you, Jim? But enough about Jim Irsay, let's get it up for the game today. Broncos versus Colts. It's gonna be a battle of horses. Grown horses versus baby horses, which you would think the grown horses have a big advantage. But for the sake of this metaphor, Baby horses are just as strong as grown horses, and today's game is gonna be great. I really mean this. This is a really difficult game for me to watch because, for a couple reasons, I've watched the Colts my whole life. They were in Indianapolis before I was even born, so I'm, I've always been a, a Colts fan. And, and growing up, I mean, Peyton Manning was the quarterback. He's my favorite quarterback of all time. And seeing him go up against his old team is like, it's really fucking difficult. And I didn't know how difficult it was gonna be until I saw this this CBS promo they were doing for Sunday Night Football, where they played that I'm Coming Home song and had Peyton be like, I will always be a member of the Colts. And then like, they, they showed him like throwing passes in Colts uniform and then blending it with him throwing passes in Denver uniform. And I was like, oh my fucking God, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry, I'm a grown man, I'm gonna cry. I'm so emotionally invested in this game and yet, Literally tonight, I could go home and get stabbed 81 times in my apartment and like Peyton Manning wouldn't even blink an eye. <laughs> like he doesn't even know that I exist. Get to his fucking Acura and, and he like turns on like, I don't know, like Otis Redding while he heads into the stadium. I mean, he doesn't give a fuck. Peyton would actually be driving a Buick. Little fact check guy, sorry. But meanwhile, I'm like, oh, Peyton's coming home, man. It's a fucking, oh, it's gonna be hell of a day. So, uh, yeah, I hope the Colts win. I also want Jimmy Irsay to be sad. So hopefully we win and like, I don't know, he, he eats a bad hot dog and doesn't make it to the bathroom, bathroom in time and he like shits in his like executive suite in his true religion jeans. I don't know, man, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of how he could have a bad day. So, so we could win or we could lose tomorrow. I hope we win, but um, I'm mostly just excited to see Peyton in Indianapolis again. And I know he's gonna fucking take his hat off or something at the end of the game, and I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> and he's not gonna even know it exists, but that's football, dude. Broncos are gonna win this game 48 to 16. Colts are gonna score two touchdowns and get a safety on Brock Osweiler. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Broncos. Have fun watching the game today. And if you haven't watched any of Steve Green's videos, go check it out. He walks around with a microphone and tries to get people to punch him in the face. And why can't we? I, I can uh, yeah. I just put my dick out and smack you in the face of it. Well, that's not, that's not gonna do anything for me though. It's pretty good. And leave a comment saying, hey, watch your video because Brandon Perna told me to. I had I I do have an affliction shirt though because I had I had I saw it and I had to fucking buy it because it's so shitty. Uh, it nice. it literally says the word redemption on it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's redemption. I just I was laughing so hard I had to own it. If a shirt makes me laugh out loud, I have to own it. That's why I have so many monkey shirts. And then I just got a shirt with a monkey that says Big Chimpin. <laughs> I lost it in the store. I, was, I lost my fucking mind.